Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm so happy that you all made it safely here. So a special extra welcome and especially welcome to those who are joining us in worship online. Um, Thank you. First, there's a lot of thank yous to to give out. I wanted to thank Pastor Jim and everyone who helped lead worship last Sunday when I was not feeling very well. Um, I really appreciate that we have this community that can come in and help support one another when we're not feeling so great. So thank you very much. Um, Also, thank you to everyone who plowed the parking lot, plowed, uh, shoveled the sidewalks here so that we could get in here safely. Uh, Thank you very much. Today we are celebrating the baptism of our Lord, of Jesus. Uh, Yesterday was the celebration of Epiphany, which is sort of the final celebration day of the season of Christmas. And now we enter into this season after Epiphany, uh, where we'll be remembering Jesus' baptism and what that also means for our baptism. Today's also Dime Sunday, so there are green and purple buckets in the back of the sanctuary. Thank you so much for your generosity. We have our annual congregational meeting coming up next Sunday after worship, and that will include a potluck meal. Um, There are some reports in the back, if any voting members wants to take some reports to the annual meeting to read over this week. Uh, You'll get an email with all of the reports included in it this week. Um, But if you have any questions about the annual meeting, please just let me know. Is there anything we need to announce about the meal? I don't think so. Okay. There will be food. (laughs) All right. Uh, We also kicked off our third annual toilet paper bowl of caring challenge. Some people have already brought stuff in early, so thank you very much for those donations. So last year, we collected roughly 2,760 rolls of toilet paper along with Lost Creek Presbyterian Church. So our goal this year is to get 3,000 single rolls of toilet paper. So you can bring those in anytime now and through February 11th on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, And you can just, they're being collected out in this hallway next to the office. And I know uh, Pastor Graham, he just went to, uh, over to the food pantry and they said they're only able to give out one roll of toilet paper per each person's visit. So it doesn't get people very far. So this really does go a long way for people. So thank you. Also coming up this month, um, Sunbeam Early Learning Center was awarded the highest rating for child care facility in the state of Pennsylvania. That's a star four rating. And so we're celebrating on January 18th at 10 a.m. There'll be a little ceremony, there'll be some food. Everyone is welcome to come and celebrate. We're having some local uh, politicians, pastors, the bishops coming just to help celebrate that the staff has worked really hard to get those certifications to be able to qualify. And it's great news because that means that the center then gets more money uh, through state funding, which is always needed. Are there any other announcements? Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and uh, we're excited to announce that we are having a girl. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we uh, revealed it to my family. We had made gingerbread cookies, and they had sprinkles, special sprinkle colors on the inside when you broke them open over Christmas. So that was like their reveal. So once they all knew, then I could let you all know. <laughs> so thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Any other announcements, joys, or concerns to share? Yes, there's yes. a Tiger Street um, sign up back there for, I don't I know January, I don't know if it's January or February, but um, if anybody feels called to go uh, to that ministry, it literally takes 10 or 15 minutes and um, they can use the help. I, they're, we went this week and they're, um, the person that's in charge is the parents, the mom had a stroke, so they were a little short-handed. So, I mean, I know you think you aren't needed, but there, mm-hmm. I mean, it is a very worthy cause. I mean, I think about 65 kiddos that um, benefit from the program. So yeah. if you can, the sign-up sheet is out there. Great, great. So the sign, Tiger Treat sign-up sheet is out there for at least January that we know. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely needed. Thank you. Any other joys or concerns? 
right, if not, please rise if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. The abundant grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is from Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon stiff like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the floods. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who has come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. All the children are invited forward for the children's message. We're going to gather up here at the font, actually, so you can come on up. Morning, how are you? Good. <laughs> oh, no. Morning. How are you, too? Good. Did you enjoy the snow yesterday? Yeah. So we're gathering here. You can touch it if you want. You want to touch it up to the whole spot? We've got water in here today. It's a little chilly, right? So today, as I mentioned, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus was baptized. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And so in a way, we're also celebrating our baptisms. And um, baptism in the Lutheran Church is what's called a sacrament. And my dad helped me learn this to think about, like, what makes something a special holy sacrament? And what makes it a whole, uh, sacrament is that it's a gift of God's grace, meaning we don't have to do anything, that it's just freely given for us. We don't have to earn it, and we don't lose it. It's just a gift of God's grace. It's commanded by Christ that we hear Jesus command us to go out and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and that there's something that we get to touch or 
feel or taste. And so in baptisms, that's the water of baptisms. Do any of you remember your baptism? Or were you babies? Oh, that's okay. No, you don't have to recite the date and time for me. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no, but so you were all babies when you were baptized? Yeah? Yeah, me too. I was baptized. The only reason I remember it is because somebody videotaped it, and right after they baptized me, I screamed really, really, really loud. And so, so I guess the water was extra cold that day. It was a really, really hot day. But um, So baptism isn't just one thing that happens to us when we're babies. For us or for some people, it's as younger children or adults but it's something that kind of goes with us through the rest of our life. So you see how there's actually another baptismal font in the back there? Did you ever notice that there before? It's got the wood stand. So that is for people, if they're coming in or if they're leaving, that they can dip their hand in the water and they can remember their baptism by doing a cross like you received at your baptism. So it's a way to remember your baptism. So, um, but what are some other ways? What are some ways that we that you interact with water in your daily life. What are some ways you use water? Do you drink it? You yeah. Wash you wash with it, yeah. Any other ways you use water? Or feel water? You can make stuff with it. You can make stuff with it, yeah. You cook with it, that's good. Awesome, yeah. I like to think even the snow here is like a frozen form of the water. Sometimes when it rains and you get that on your skin. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, you make ice. So any time that you, your skin touches water, you can even remember it. So like when you take a bath or a shower, you wash your hands, you can even use those little times in your day to remember your baptism. So we're going to, if everybody wants to put their hand in the water, we're going to remember <coughs> our baptisms now and we're going to pray, okay? All right, so you can put the cross, go like this, and you make a little cross on your head. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of baptism. We ask you to help us to remember it, that it can bless us and remind us that you walk with us each and every day of our life, that the Holy Spirit is with us. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. I appreciate it. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. <coughs> so I always find myself on this Sunday after the Christmas season sort of scratching my head, looking around, and asking myself, now what? Have you ever watched the Disney movie Finding Nemo? Have you ever watched it all the way through past the credits where there's a little scene at the end? 
Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler for you if you haven't seen it, but you have seen the whole movie, so. There's this short scene that sort of matches this sort of mindset that I'm in this week. There's this epic story in the movie Finding Nemo of Marlin, the father clownfish, journeying across the ocean to find his son, Nemo, who had been taken and placed in a fish tank in a dentist's office in Australia. And there's this big, great journey, but at the end of the movie, he gets his son back and their home safe. And then the credits roll. But after the credits, we see some characters we met through Nemo, who were also in that fish tank in the dentist's office in Australia, who were trying to escape as well and had helped Nemo escape. They have managed in these little plastic bags filled with water to roll themselves out the window, out through the street, and into the ocean. And they finally land in the ocean, and they escape, and they're back. And then there's a moment of silence. And they look at each other. And one of the fish say, now what? And that's just how the scene ends. That's where I'm at this week. We've just experienced this epic story of Jesus, his birth through the seasons of Advent and Christmas. Jesus' parents make their own dangerous journey welcome their son into the world, name him Jesus. The angels sang, the shepherds gathered and cheered and celebrated, and the wise men came and gave gifts to honor the newborn king. It's an amazing, miraculous event that's coupled with our own celebrations of Christmas, of parties and feasts and presents and decorations and lights singing and rejoicing. But here we are now on the other side of Christmas. And I wonder what exactly has changed. Has the world changed? Have we changed? Has Jesus' birth changed anything? After we take down the Christmas tree and decorations, What are we left with now? What do we do now? In January, we're left realizing that in some ways, we are still waiting for Jesus. We're still waiting for his kingdom to come, still waiting for his work to be done in our lives and in the world. We find ourselves still living in the same world as we did before December. We are still struggling with the same things we did prior to the holidays. So what did Jesus accomplish? And what is Jesus still accomplishing in us now? As I mentioned before, the Gospel of Mark doesn't have a Christmas story. Jesus shows up as a fully grown man Mark tells us in our reading this morning, in those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him as John baptized him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus as a way to help us transition from the miraculous birth of Jesus to the everyday work we are called to do as followers of Christ. The reality is is that Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He had no sin to wash away like we do. Jesus was God. He didn't need the gifts of salvation and eternal life. So why did Jesus get baptized? I think he got baptized because it meant something important to him. Because it's important for our lives. Jesus wanted us to to show us the meaning of baptism. To help us to discern what our baptisms mean to us. 
and understanding the meaning of our baptism can help us figure out what we do next after this Christmas season comes to an end. So what did baptism mean for Jesus? First, I think it's important to mention that baptism did not mean that God would keep Jesus out of trouble. Immediately after being baptized, Jesus is driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he is tempted by the devil. Baptism didn't mean that everything would work out just the way Jesus had planned or hoped. Instead, Jesus' baptism signaled that when he found himself in trouble, when he found himself in the wilderness, that he was never alone. Even when things didn't go the way Jesus wanted, he would always have God's blessing and the Spirit as company. And that's the same way for us in our baptisms. Our baptisms don't mean that we live happily ever after. The waters of baptism aren't a wishing well where we receive our greatest wants and desires. Our baptism in Christ means that we are not alone, especially in the wildernesses of our lives. God's love for us is given freely and it doesn't wash off. Whenever we find ourselves in a rut, we can be confident that Jesus is there with us, guiding us and watching over us. As we go from the holidays to everyday life, God continues to go with us. One of the best things we can do is to remember that in our daily life. As we continue to live in a world as it is and pray for a world that we hope for, to make the sign of the cross on our forehead, to remember our baptisms, to remember that God is with us. Jesus was baptized with us even though he didn't have to be. Jesus was born into this broken world with us to save us, to walk with us, to give us life everlasting. And that gives me comfort and guidance in the days ahead to know that I'm not alone. So now what? Now we remember our baptisms and we pray. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for meeting us on the other side of Christmas. We thank you for the Spirit's presence and blessings that we receive in baptism. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who joins us in the ruts and the rough places of our life. Help us to remember that your presence and grace never leave us. Amen.
now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Uplift leaders to share the truth of your word and community. Encourage us to live in the promises of baptism, working for justice and peace in all the world. God of grace. Renew your creation, God of thunder and mighty waters. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. Summon the stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace. Give strength to your leaders, God, who is present in every country and community. Raise up leaders committed to equity and healing. Grant them discernment and compassion as they lead in love. God of grace. Protect and cherish the most valuable among us, God of strength. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and in any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and suffering, especially Beth, Raymond, Michelle, Barry, Clara, Joanne, Barb, Dwayne, and all others we now name. God of grace. Father God, encourage this congregation, especially its children. Continue to watch over Carl. Encourage him in learning and ensure that his blood sugar remains stable. Protect him as he plays with his brother with his dinosaurs and monster trucks and rides side by side. Guide us in accompanying, learning from, and serving each other. Following the example of Jesus, God of grace. Amen. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve, even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection. God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another, however you feel comfortable. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. Amen. Please be seated.
please rise as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Please receive the blessing. Giver of every gift, or God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. are God's beloved. <laughs>